Hello again, watch friends. Welcome back. If you know the name Dornbluth and Son, you're probably spending too much time surfing the watch forum. Or maybe you just happen to know about and appreciate fine German watchmaking. In either case, let me tell you about my Dornbluth and Son 99.1 medium. I don't know why I waited so long to do a review of my 99.1 medium. It's a brand and a watch that has been on my radar for a couple of years, and it took over a year from first thoughts of obtaining a DNS piece to actually holding one, mine, in my hand. I had become aware of the brand from visiting the annual Watch Buys Roadshow in New York City a couple of times, and that's where the impetus of actually purchasing one occurred. You can easily obtain an off-the-rack Dornbluth 99.1 in one of two sizes, a 40 millimeter and a 42 millimeter. For the couple of years I saw the 99.1, I thought the 42 millimeter was just a little large for my wrist, even though I have a seven and a half inch wrist. Both watches are virtually identical, at least off-the-shelf versions. And when I say easily obtain, well, there's often a wait of a few months because these watches are not produced cookie cutter like from some vast watch making machine a la Willy Wonka. No, these are essentially handmade watches that take time. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Frankly, what captured my interest was working with Dornbluth directly to get a custom designed version of the piece I wanted. That meant choosing the dial material, the color, numberings, and hands. As a result, I spec'd a unique, one-off piece that is all the more special to me. Starting with the case, it measures 40.2 millimeters, at least mine does, by 10 millimeters thick. Interestingly, the watch wears larger than the dimensions would suggest. If I didn't know better, I'd say this was maybe a 42 millimeter watch, although it's billed as a 40 millimeter watch and actually measures about that. Lugs accommodate a 20 millimeter strap and are, I would say, proportional to the case. Lug width actually measures 19.8 millimeters for what it's worth. Lug to lug distance is a relatively long 50 millimeters, but fortunately the lugs curl down, which minimize the presence on the wrist. Still, the longish lugs do look correct with respect to the overall case. A sapphire crystal is placed atop and below the nickel-free stainless steel case, which is polished and is rather attractive. I like the oversized crown, stage whisper, teeny crowns really bug me because I can't get a good purchase on them to wind the watch. So the 99.1M has an easy to use crown that takes about 30 or so winds every morning. It is a manual wind watch after all. The crown is signed with the brand name, but the logo is a little difficult to see. Maybe rather than embossing, another technique would look sharper. For many of the Dornbluth models, you can choose either a brass or a ceramic dial. The brass dials, like all their dials, are hand cut from hand ground metal blanks on a manual machine rather than on a computerized CNC machine. One of the things that make the dials unique is that the subdials are cut out completely with the actual subdial layered underneath as another piece of brass. This adds a pleasing three-dimensional aspect. The dials are engraved by hand, numerals and markers, using a pantograph, an old-school template tracing device, and when done, are silver-plated and covered with ultra-thin clear varnish that protects against discoloration and moisture penetration. The other type of dial, one that I chose, is the ceramic dial. This is Dornbluth's alternative to the traditional enamel dial, but without the downside risk of potential cracking and flaking due to being brittle. 
Any color can be chosen. I use the European RAL color chart to research and ultimately spec the colors I wanted for the dial and subdial. My watch being RAL 3005 maroon for the dial and RAL 9010 cream for the subdial. Once the ceramic dial is created, it's polished by hand, then engraved using the panograph, and finally coated with either a matte or glossy surface. By the way, the technique using the pantograph takes about four hours to complete. Again, it's done by hand. It's not an automated procedure. I had a choice of applied numerals or filled, and I thought that the hand-applied numerals would look classy. They did, as you can see. The pear-shaped hands are interesting. I chose to not have blued hands, as I didn't think the color would complement the maroon dial. Instead, silver hands were chosen, and the shapes are unique. The pear shape on the hour hand, and a slightly bulbous minute hand. I find that both hands perfectly suit the watch. The Unitas at a 64.97 and 64.98 movements are legacy pocket watch movements that have been used in many wristwatches in the past few decades. Chiefly Panerai, but other brands such as Stoa, Laco, and others as well. These movements are on the larger side, which seems to have matched the watch size zeitgeist in the last decade or so. The two movements are essentially the same, the difference being that the 6497 has the small seconds located at the 9 o'clock position rather than at 6 o'clock. Initially, Dornbluth used the Unita 6498 in the 99.1 model, which has a 42 millimeter diameter. The brand was able to fit the movement into the slightly smaller 99.1M. In any case, Dornbluth extensively reworks the 6498, about 60% of the final movement is their own contribution. Some of the features you get with a Dornbluth movement are traditional German three-quarter plate finished in rose gold, other options are available, that has beveled edges and Geneva striping, jewels set in screwed gold chatons, and hand-engraved balance cock with a swan neck regulator and a hand polished ratchet spring with sunburst finished crown wheels. I know that's a mouthful. Just look at the picture or the video. You can see how nicely it's done. Don't forget, all of this watchmaking, as seen with the movement, is done by hand. No automation, no CNC machines, just done by a small group of highly skilled craftspeople in the town of Calba, about two hours east northeast of Hanover. The 99.1 movement runs at a traditional 18,000 beats per hour. Truly blued screws, rather than painted, hold down the balance and are used for the chatons. Hand engraving complements the three-quarter plate, and you can request to have a personal engraving done so long as it fits. On the time grapher, I measure about plus two seconds per day, which is even after almost a year of owning the watch, a demonstration of the watchmaking skill of Dieter and Dirk Dornbluth, father and son. You don't hear the term finely tailored goods that much anymore, but that's what I often think about when looking at my Dornbluth 99.1M. I've been wearing mine for almost two months straight, a record for me, I think. I'm on a computer almost all day long, and I often check the computer clock for the time of meetings and appointments. When I do this, I always glance at the 99 on my wrist, and I smile every time, since the time is exactly on. The time grapper results bears this out. D. Dornbluth & Son is truly one of the best kept secrets in all of watchmaking, whether you're talking German, Swiss, or whatever. If you can swing it, I highly recommend the brand 
for even one of their standard models. Or, for a little bit more, a customized bespoke version like I have. If you want a burger your way, go to McDonald's. If you want to watch your way, you know the answer where to go. Especially if you're interested in old school craftsmanship.